everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and to my latest episode of New Music Weekly, the show where I give you guys the top five prog news headlines, introduce you guys to some new prog singles, and give you updates on the channel and what's happening here with Nathan on Shuffle. Today is December 2nd, 2023, and there's a good amount of news to get into, so I'm excited to talk about it. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, I would really highly recommend it. I give these updates about weekly and it's always a lot of fun to be able to give you guys the news and hopefully introduce you guys to some new music. Uh, that's the whole point of the channel, so hopefully you guys have been enjoying the content. And a like or a comment is always well appreciated as well. So thank you guys for your support, and let's dive into the news. So number one item on the news list is the new release from Peter Gabriel, his new album I.O., which is a new album after quite a long time away. Uh, he had his previous album Up, in 2002, so this is about 20 plus years later that he's finally coming out with IO. So it's a big event, big news in the prog world. Peter Gabriel is, of course, the legendary frontman of, of Genesis back in the early 70s days, and he's gone on to have a prolific and celebrated solo career. So people were really excited about this release, and it's been interesting because he's slow rolled the release throughout the year. He's released a single uh, every month. So really, you could have built the album as you went along throughout the year if you wanted to hear the singles as they came out. Um, and there's been two different makes, the bright side makes, the dark side makes. Um, so you get two different flavors of these songs. And so there's a lot that goes into it. And now there's a lot of physical packages coming out. Uh, you get the bright side makes version on CD and vinyl, as well as the dark side makes. You get uh, Blu-ray with a new version, I believe that has like Dolby Atmos and all of these different uh, facets to it. So there's a lot of different formats and different ways to hear this music. And it's a really great album that I think any fan of Peter Gabriel should totally love. Of course, more in like an art pop direction than a proggy direction, as he's been known for since his solo material began in the late 70s through the 80s and up to now. So really great stuff. His voice just sounds incredible. Um, you can't tell, you know, that anything has missed a beat since the previous record. I think this is just as strong as his prior material. And so it's a really great album to look into and to just be excited over because it's great to see these legendary prog uh, artists still delivering great top-notch music. So this is something worth discussing and worth talking about in the prog community. So uh, that's the big release that I know of from this weekend. Let me know in the comments of any other big releases that I may have missed, but I've been so focused on the Peter Gabriel record that that's basically uh, the main thing I've been listening to this weekend. So um, second item on the list, The Pineapple Thief shared a new single called The Frost from their forthcoming album, It Leads to This. Uh, this is going to be coming out on February 9th on K-Scope. Uh, Pineapple Thief are more maybe of a progressive art rock type band. You know, they have... Uh, that porcupine tree flavor, you know, a little bit of a darker, melancholy side to their sound, um, but really well-crafted musicianship. Bruce Sword is a great songwriter for the group. He's been uh, the founding member for, you know, back in 1999. Um, Gavin Harrison is now on the drums, so they went through a little bit of a lineup change in recent years, and that adds a new dimension to the sound as well. So this should be a really cool release, and as I'll mention in the singles list, the single is a great taste of what you can expect from the album. So um, there's only eight tracks on the album. It seems like it's a fairly shorter album, um, but it should be a cool one to look into in February, and probably one that'll be featured here on the channel um, each track is about five minutes long, mixing rock urgency with delicate atmospherics, pensive keys, and captivating melodies. Find Sword looking back and fearing for the world his ch children will inherit. His lyrics also draw from literature, accounts of ancient Rome, John Williams' classic stoner, and epistolary uh, Augustus, all conveyed through Sword's fragile yet penetrative tenor, nodding to storytellers like Nick Drake, Tom York, and Catatonia's Jonas Rinsky. So... A uh, really cool uh, album should be something to look forward to, and they're also doing somewhat of a European tour as well to support the album, so it should be a cool time to be a Pineapple Thief fan, so something to look forward to. 
And then another band, maybe a little bit more obscure uh, for item number three, Kairos announced their new album, Mannequin, and released a single called Ghosts of You. This is their fourth studio album being released on February 2nd on limited uh, limited edition double orange vinyl, digipack CD, and a digital version. Um, This is a band that's more... Uh, they've embraced this 80s synth pop direction to their prog sound, which really is an interesting element and makes them sound unique in the prog scene, I think, because of how much they embrace that like 80s sunny uh, synth led pop music. Uh, really good stuff. And they're just incredible musicians, uh, really able to. Uh, balance these two almost conflicting feels this 80s influenced pop side to their sound but then this complex musicality like you'd hear from classic yes and genesis so really fun stuff the single is really cool um so this is an album to look into and to get excited over uh mannequin by kairos uh uk prog synth Uh, band that are just incredible and showcase a lot of technical ability but always focused on great melodies and great song craft so right up my alley is basically uh what it is and then a couple of interesting items here number four i wanted to mention the 2023 prog report awards uh this is a fan voted uh way of, of counting out the best music of the year basically in several different categories it's like the prog version of the grammy awards you know uh and all the bands and artists are really excited about this and uh telling their fans to vote for them in this uh in this poll so it's really kind of exciting for prog fans to get into and i think prog report does an incredible job with it the voting ends on december 11th so there's still a week and some change to get your votes in there's eight categories this year including album song epic live album album cover video production and artist slash band of the year so eight cool categories to uh basically earmark this year and you know give a taste of what the best music was to come from from this year so you can look at the nominees it's on their website progreport.com they have links to all the different uh categories and you can vote there's a pretty lengthy list in each category of options uh featuring all of the major prog bands that you'd expect um so it's just a fun way to celebrate this little genre and to try to showcase what some of the best music was that came out this year and i'm going to be doing my own album rankings and things like that also as the year uh comes to a close which i'm excited to talk about my favorite records which should be pretty apparent if you follow the channel and see some of my glowing reviews throughout the year but uh really fun time i always like the end of year time for music where you get to wrap up and showcase some albums that maybe fell through the cracks and i always find stuff through other people's lists that i forgot about or that you know wasn't on my radar and now i go check out and find a whole new album that i didn't hear so it's always a great time to discover new music to share the things that you're passionate about and that you loved in the year and just a great time to reflect back on what occurred during this year so And finally, I've talked a little bit about this, I think, in a previous show, but I'm so excited I want to mention it again now that there's a little bit uh, more hints uh, towards this. Uh, Swedish proggers Beardfish are back, apparently. You know, they basically broke up back in 2016 after their album 4626 Comfort Zone. Uh, That was their previous album. And they broke up, which was really sad for those who were big fans of them. They're just such great classic prog uh, musicians doing that classic symphonic style in their own unique, quirky way. It was just a fun band to follow, and it was devastating to lose them back in 2016. Uh, But they announced that they were going to be part of an upcoming festival, um, which I think I mentioned, a Norway uh, progressive rock festival that features other luminaries like the Chronicles of Father Robin and Seven Impale and ACT. Um, Really cool artists being included there, but on the bill, oh, alongside Moon Safari as well, which I'm going to be talking about on the channel soon. Um, But yeah, Beardfish were on the lineup as well, which really was surprising to a lot of people because they have been 
broken up as a band for you know seven years or so so it was exciting to see them on the bill but now there's been pictures and videos of them actually in the studio um so there's a lot of activity happening there it seems like they're working on some kind of new material some new record so it isn't just a one-off festival concert it seems like they're officially uh, actually back together and working on new material and that something may materialize maybe even as soon as next next year sometime I would guess so really exciting to see them work in the studio I, I've seen it on Facebook just several clips of them working on new stuff and it's always fun to hear their brand of quirky cool progressive rock uh, I love the band and they've always been one of my top tier favorites so really exciting news for fans of Beardfish one of the great new revival prog bands for me at least now getting into the singles list which are a lot of singles related to the items i've just discussed uh the last peter gabriel single that came out for the io album live and let live uh, is on my prog singles list just to give a, a last taste of what you can expect from io uh, Neil Morse has a new track out, I Hate My Brothers, which is coming from his new album, uh, The Restoration Joseph Part 2, which comes out in January, January 12th. So not too long to wait for that one, about a month and a week away from, from right now. So something to look forward to as Neil Morse fans. It's the sequel album to the album that came out this uh, August, I believe, The Dreamer, Joseph Part 1. So it'll probably follow in that similar style. A little bit of a musical theater type direction, similar to Jesus Christ the Exorcist, but I felt a little bit more grounded in Neil's traditional prog rock roots and had a lot of fun cool guest artists on it and things like that you know it's not a typical neil morse band album but i think it really uh showcases neil morse's solo material and using a few different musicians and bringing in some other elements that you don't typically hear from the neil morse band so uh really fun there's going to be some cool guest artists on this upcoming album nick de virgilio ted leonard matt smith ross jennings jake livgren and alan morse so it should be a lot of fun to hear part two of the album and see uh, how the story continues with this Joseph story. Um, number three on the prog singles list, The Pineapple Thieves, The Frost, which I talked about earlier about their upcoming album. Um, Steve Hackett has a track also that I've put on the list called People of the Smoke from his upcoming album, The Circus and the Night Whale, which comes out on February 16th next year. So I talked a bit about that in my previous New Music Weekly show, uh, that this is a concept album, should be a lot of fun to get into. Uh, Steve Hackett is one of my favorites of the like classic prog legends who's still out there making music and still out there touring. He's doing such a great job with his, you know, revisiting Genesis stuff that he does, but also making some really fascinating, cool new material. And so this should be something to really look forward to next year, um, alongside all of his typical touring activities that he'll be doing next year also. So, And then finally, a Ky the Kairos track, Ghosts of You, from their upcoming album Mannequin, you know, giving that 80s synth-pop flavor uh, mixed with prog rock. It's a really cool stew of music that I really enjoy and hope you guys do too. So those are the items that I have today. I think it was a fun little uh, list of items. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments any other news things that may have happened this week that I didn't cover uh, on this episode. As for the channel itself, this week was fun. I did two reviews that I was pretty happy to put out there. Two new bands that have made some incredible music this year. Uh, one is Temek, which features Eric Gillette and Diego Tejeda. Uh, two very notable prog musicians coming together to form somewhat of a new super group in prog metal and it's a real grower of an album i would really encourage you even if you heard it once and were like yeah it's not really my thing uh, it may be worth a couple repeated listens because it took me a few listens to really figure out its genius and now it's fast becoming one of my favorite releases of the year uh, the other album that i covered was press to enter and their new album from mirror to road this is another new uh progressive metal band that i hadn't heard before uh, i believe this is their debut album it has a little bit of that synth pop type feel to it also but a lot of genty progressive metal goodness a lot of great cool guitar runs and bass runs and it's just a really talented group of musicians uh from i believe denmark who have made such an incredible release that I think is worth people's attention. So two a little bit more obscure uh, reviews, so they didn't get as well viewed as, as typical, 
but I understand it. Uh, but I would encourage you to go check out those reviews if you haven't seen them yet on the channel. Um, and I unfortunately had to skip uh, Prog Song Sunday last week with Jana. I know that was probably disappointing to a lot of fans, but we'll have a new one coming out uh, tomorrow on this Sunday, and it's a pretty classic prog track that I think most of you will really adore. So really excited to put that out there to get us back on track with the Prog Song Sundays of it all. I have two really big reviews that I'm putting out this week. First is Moon Safari's Himmelback in Volume 2, which I just can't wait to get out there. I've been so uh, chomping at the bit to get my opinion, and I've been seeing all these reviews pop up on other channels and other review sites and whatnot, and just really wanting to get my voice out there so that I don't just get buried in the makes of all these other opinions. But I'm, it's one of my favorite bands of all time and one of my favorite albums of all time, and I'm really excited to di dive deeply into it and give my impressions and thoughts about it. And then I'm going to cover the new Earthside record, uh, Let the Truth Speak, which I've been really enjoying. find it to be a really captivating uh, listen that surprised me. It's not my typical lane of progressive music, but uh, I found a lot to enjoy from it and think it's a really great work of art that I wanted to get into also. And then for the rest of the year, I'm going to be doing a lot of that year-end type stuff that you'd expect from a music channel. You know, I'm going to be doing uh, a catch-all of all the albums that have come out this year that I didn't get a chance to spotlight, doing that quick, like, one-minute reviews uh, for about 25 or so different albums that I really liked but just haven't had the time to fully discuss yet on the channel. Uh, that should be a really fun show for some really great recommendations if you're looking for some new prog music. Um, I'm also going to be doing uh, kind of two different end-of-year shows. One, uh, the honorable mentions list of, of the albums that I really love that didn't quite make the top 16. And then, of course, my big top 16 tournament where I decide officially what my favorite album of the year was. So really fun stuff ahead in the next few weeks. I hope you guys will stick around with me and keep uh, being a part of the channel. It's really fun to see people... Uh, continue to comment and continue to be involved with the channel and to see all the engagement. It's really fun for me and hopefully it's fun for you guys as well. So thank you guys for joining me on this episode. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well out there and I'll see you guys in hopefully a future episode. So bye everybody. Enjoy the music. <laughs>